is up YouTube I am Nintendo Man 64 and I am bringing you the next episodes of Pokemon Heart Gold's action replay edition last time we went through Victory Road we took down not applicable another time made our way here to the Indigo Plateau and actually caught ourselves a shiny onyx which is always a good thing now my levels are going to be very inconsistent with the way I had said, because I had previously said I wanted everyone at level 45. Well, I did a test of this fight, and this fight, and this run through the Elite Four and the Champion, was not too kind to a certain Ghost-type Pokemon we have. So I have drastically leveled her up, and have leveled everybody else up a touch more or a touch less than I had anticipated, mostly hiccup sorry mostly because I know how this I know how this elite four went run, run went so let's take a look at everybody Alessi our mischievous our ghost type the only Pokemon on our team that is not fully evolved but it will be evolved very soon after we beat the elite four hopefully we do it is adamant natured, which is plus attack at the expense of special attack, which is unfortunate for Alessi because she is supposed to be a special attacking demigod, but that's okay. Levitate for the ability, which gives it immunity to from ground type moves. And it has a monstrous special attacking move set, including Shadow Ball, Psy Beam, Charge Beam, and Dark Pulse. I taught it Dark Pulse via the TM. So it can have more type coverage and deal with psychic types should the events run into a place where Shadow Ball would be unable to do it. Such as if we encounter a Giraffe Rig. I don't think there's going to be a Giraffe Rig in this Elite Four, but you never can be too sure. You can never be too certain. Mama's Boy, our Marowak. Naughty nature for the ability, carrying the thick club. And as I forgot to mention... Mistrius will be holding the amulet coin for this first battle. Mama's boy will hold the thick club which doubles his attacking capabilities. Doubles. You heard that right. So that attack strength is already 206. One swords dance which doubles which raises his attack level two stages and this thing might be the most powerful thing in the region. And it will only continue to get stronger as it levels up. Rockhead for the ability so it protects itself from recoil with the moves Earthquake, Swords Dance, False Swipe, and Thrash. Also has the ability as a naughty nature, which raises its attack at the expense of special defense, considering it's a ground type. I understand that and can deal with that. Here is Taboos, our Crobat. Naughty nature, the exact same as Marowak. Meaning, attack up, special defense down. It will be holding the XP share for this fight. It is a poison flying type. The only reason I did not level this one up to level 45 is because it's a little bit challenging of a Pokemon to level up in Victory Road. So, I chose to obviously, you know, leave it as is. And it'll have the XP share throughout most of the Elite Four runs so it can get some more experience that way. And it knows the moves. Cross Poison fly u-turn and mean look i thought about getting rid of mean look for a, for a couple of minutes but i decided i still need mean look should i encounter raikou in the post game and i do not want any pokemon running away because i only have one master ball and i don't plan on doing any of the gimmicky bs to get another one derporia our gyarados quirky nature which means it does not have any stat boosting or stat reducing uh, uh, natures it is a water flying type it will be holding the never melt ice throughout the majority of this fight until something else pops up should i require it intimidate for the ability which means it lowers the foe's attacking stat and i forgot to mention taboos inner focus prevents it from flinching flinching sorry Derporia learned the move Dragon Dance while I was leveling her up, which boosts its attack and speed stats, which will basically make this thing a merciless tank. 
and alongside Dragon Dance, it knows Waterfall, Ice Fang, and Bite. I also, it also tried to learn Hydro Pump, but I saw no reason to give it Hydro Pump because, well, look at that special attack. It's nothing that good at all. But whatever. Nutmeg, our Arcanine, naughty natured, just like uh, Crobat and just like Crobat and Marowak. It will be holding the King's Rock, which can occasionally make a Pokemon flinch should it be attacked. It is a pure fire type. Great stats all around. Intimidate for an ability, sharing that with Gyarados, that lowers the foe's attack stat one level. With the moves, Flamethrower, Iron Tail, Crunch, and Thunder Fang. I got rid of Strength on Nutmeg, mostly because I don't think we need it anymore. And I wanted some type coverage, because this Elite Four is pretty damn lethal when it comes to type coverage. So as long as you have a pretty well-balanced team, you should do pretty well in this Elite Four. And, considering I have a, an, I have a Arcanine that knows four different types of moves, one of which is a powerful type of its same type, we should be in good hands. And last up, our starter Pokemon, Soups the Meganium, Calm Natured, which basically weakens attack at the expense of special defense. It will be holding the Miracle Seed to boost up its grass type attacks, and has Overgrow for an ability, which powers up its grass type moves in a pinch, which, again, very good for a defensive grass type like him. And he has the moves Petal Dance, Headbutt, Light Screen, and Frenzy Plant. Holy guacamole, he is good. In fact, in general, this whole team is very good. I can't really think that we will have a significant issue with this Elite Four. Not that I don't think this Elite Four is any good, and we're getting a phone call. And it's irrelevant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for interrupting my uh, monologue here. But whatever. Let me take a drink of water first. Sponsor being Smart Water. But shut up. Who cares? Uh, Alright. Once you enter this door, you will be facing one of the Elite Four. They are really tough. You cannot exit once you enter. Are you ready? Be courageous and go for it. Alright, this Elite Four has never really been too problematic, save for one member. But, we'll get to that member when we get to that member. First up on our list is this guy who's got weird boxes flying everywhere. So he must be a Psychic type trainer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I have Alessi out first. Welcome to the Pokemon League. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Will. I have trained all around the world, making my Psychic-type Pokemon powerful. And at last, I've been accepted into the Elite Four. I can only keep getting better. Losing is not an option. Now, as you will recall, Psychic-types do not have that many weaknesses. But their three most critical ones are Bug, Psych- Sorry, Bug, Ghost, and Dark types. He will be starting off with a Zatu level 40. Whew. This one's not gonna- This one's gonna be pretty straightforward to take out. Uh, let's try a Shadow Ball. Right off the bat, that should do pretty significant damage. And, right off the bat, one hit KO, I'll take that. 732 experience points. Taboos get some experience. That's all good. Another Zatu. This is his most powerful Zatu, which is kind of weird. But, uh, to each his own, I suppose. Now, every final member of the Elite Four, or sorry, every member of the Elite Four is the most powerful Pokemon will hold a Citrus Berry. That means if you do not kill it in one shot, it will recover a, a significant amount of HP and be able to counterattack with great force. Unfortunately for it, I think Alessi's got this in the bag, so I think I'll just let her sweep through this team. Now I do have the I do have the move sets right next to me, so in case you're interested, I'll can I will begin at this point, unfortunately, describing these move sets to you. Jinx is up next. 
Uh, Ice Psychic type, oblivious for the ability, so don't try to make it fall in love with you. With the moves Lovely Kiss, Psychic, Double Slap, and Ice Punch. Again, pretty straightforward moveset. Shadow Ball should do its job. Ooh, Jinx lived. Nice. I get respect. I have nothing but respect for Jinx nowadays. Alright, so it should heal itself this turn. So let's use a Dark Pulse. Get a good chunk of the damage in on it. And then we'll finish it off, depending on how much damage Dark Pulse does. Ooh, nice. All right. Taboos. Executor is up next. Grass Psychic type. Chlorophyll for the ability. Let's go Taboos out there. Let's let's retire Alessi a little bit early. Grass Psychic type. Chlorophyll for the ability, so it doubles its speed in the sunshine, which should not matter unless you potentially use sunshine. With the moves. Reflect. Psychic. Hypnosis and Egg Bomb. It's mostly a setup Pokemon, but... Alright, let's see. What could I expect as a... It's probably going to be Psychic, so... Um... Let's go with Nutmeg. I thought... I honestly thought U-Turn was going to take this thing out in one shot, but unfortunately that does not appear to be the case. Alright, Nutmeg can tank a Psychic or two, which is good. So we'll crunch this Executor into the brink. And take care of that. That leaves just one Pokemon left on his team. His Slowbro, a Water Psychic type. Own Tempo for the ability so it cannot be confused. With the moves Curse, Amnesia, Water Pulse, and Psychic. It's very slow, as slow bros tend to be. So don't expect this thing to be that much of a challenge unless your team is very underleveled. But I think Alessi is more than capable of handling this on her own. And I think the Shadow Ball should do the trick. Oh, wow. Man, slow bro and Jinx, man. Great defensive Pokemon. Alright, so luckily for me, it won't heal itself. Or it won't be able to do much damage on me, so we'll finish it off with a Dark Pulse. Or we'll just do the same thing we did with Jinx, where Dark Pulse will do a decent amount of damage, and then we finish the job. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to do my best not to fast forward through these fights unless they're getting a little too gimmicky. So we can see all that these Elite Four guys have to offer. Alright. I, I, can't, I can't believe it. And we get a lot of money, which is good because we were very low. Even though I was defeated, I won't change my course. I will continue battling until I stand above all trainers. Now move on exper and experience the true ferocity of the Elite Four. I am unafraid of this Elite Four. But, obviously, I want to heal my guys. I have a bunch of Moo Moo Milks, as well as some Hyper Potions, so... I want to be able to... I want to conserve my items to the best of my ability. I don't want to use items too much in battle because I found that that's kind of a weakness of mine, personally, but... Whatever. I'm going to be taking the amulet coin off of Alessi and I'm going to be giving it to Nutmeg here because Nutmeg is going to be the heart of my attack force for this next fight. Now, let's see. There's my amulet coin. And Alessi's basically just going to be a secret weapon moving forward. Should we have our issues. So Nutmeg is up next. And here we have a familiar face for uh, Kanto people. A, new, a person that was a former gym leader that has basically evolved himself into a member of the Elite Four. But enough about... But enough about him. Let's talk about the rest of him. 
I am Koga of the Elite Four. I live in shadows. A ninja! My intricate style will confound and destroy you. Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be the victim of my sinister techniques. <laughs> Pokemon are not merely about brute force. You shall see soon enough. Koga is the master of... He's supposed to be a master of poison types, but he's sort of bizarrely balanced. He has some poison types, he has some bug types, and hence why Nutmeg is out there first, because, well, she is my... She is my expert at scorching bug types. Uh, we start off with Ariados, a bug poison type, insomnia for the ability so it can't fall asleep. Spiderweb, Poison Jab, Giga Drain, and Baton Pass. I don't really know why it has Baton Pass since it doesn't really have any stat boosting moves, but that's okay. One Ariados is down, Nutmeg gets some experience, as does Taboos. And next up is Foratress. Not a poison type, oddly enough. Swift, Protect, Explosion, Toxic Spikes, Bug Steel type, Sturdy for the ability, so one hit KO moves will not work on it. But since it's Bug Steel type, it has a quad weakness to fire. And very quickly, he's down two Pokemon. The fight should not really get interesting until we get to his last Pokemon. Here is Muck. Yes, spelt backwards, it is very bad. But, Muck is a pure poison type. That is very good at special defending, but not so good at physical defending. So this is where Mama's Boy comes in. Poison, sorry, Muck is a poison type level 42, sticky hold for the ability. So it cannot lose its items that easily. It's holding the Black Sludge to repeatedly boost its uh, HP back should it survive an attack. With the moves Minimize, Gunk Shot, Screech, and Toxic. It's only real threat is using Minimize, and it is a pain in the ass when it does that, but Mama's Boy took it out in one shot, so we should be in good shape. Taboos goes to level 45, which is good. Taboos wants to learn the move Haze. Ooh, that is a good move. In case you don't know, Haze changes all stat boosting moves, so if you're up against the Pokemon that has a really good stat boosting move. Haze could come in handy, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the move space to want to be able to use that. Next up is Venomoth, another bug poison type, and a one that I think is a little underrated. It's got pretty decent stats all around. Shield dust for the ability, so added effects will not do much damage to it. So if I burn it, if I basically use flamethrower on it it won't be able to use uh, it won't be able to be burnt the only way you could possibly burn it is if you use will-o-wisp or paralyze it with thunder wave or poison it with like a move like poison powder but of course since it's a poison type you can't poison the poison type uh, with the moves toxic supersonic psychic and gust unfortunately it was no match for nutmeg and this is his last Pokemon. He has his own Crobat, just like we do. I am going to keep Nutmeg out there for the moment. While I think of a strategy, because this Crobat can definitely be challenging. Holds a Citrus Berry, inner focus just like ours, so it can't flinch. With the moves Double Team, Wing Attack, Quick Attack, and Poison Fang. Now I'm going to try to do Thunder Fang here and see how much damage it will do. It should do a decent amount, because we do have a lot of physical attack. And we paralyzed it! Perfect! So we drained its speed advantage. The only thing it might be able to do is use quick attack to nullify that. And flamethrower should take it out. Ooh, it lived! That's not good. <coughs> Jeez Louise. All right. I don't know if it's past the point of healing itself or not, but just in case it is, we'll use Thunder Fang. 
Oh, and it's not, so that's perfect. And Nutmeg goes, sorry, and Crobat goes down. Nutmeg did her job. She's my good little girl. Ah, oh, you have proven your worth. We get a lot of money from beating Koga, so that's nice. I subject you to everything I could muster, but my efforts failed. I must hone my skills. Go on to the next room and put your abilities to the test. Okay, and just like in most of these action replays, and basically every Elite Four since... Well, I think Black was the first time I did it. We are going to take on the entire Elite Four in one sitting. So, as I, remem as I recall who's up next, I have to set up my team accordingly. And honestly, I think Taboos might be my best bet here. I am going to take Nutmeg off of the amulet coin, though. And I'm actually going to give it to, believe it or not, I'm going to give it to Soups. Of course, I'm going to give him back the Miracle Seeds when we get to our fight, but Soups, Derporia, Soups and Derporia are the only two that have not had their appearance yet. Soups will appear in this fight, and Derporia will appear in the last fight, but still... I want to be fair to all my Pokemon, so... Are we ready? Alright, let's go, Taboos. You're my Titan for this fight. Another familiar face for Kanto people. The only surviving member... Well, not surviving, but... The only member of the Elite Four from the original games that is left in the Elite Four is this guy, Bruno. I am Bruno of the Elite Four. I always train to the extreme because I believe in our potential. That is how we became strong. Can you withstand our power? Hmm. I see no fear in you. You look determined. Perfect for battle. Ready, Mikey? You will bow down to our overwhelming power. Hoo-ha! Fighting type... Bruno is a master of fighting types. Though he has one that isn't fighting type, but I digress. He has all three Hitmon Pokemon. He will be starting off with Hitmon Top. The Johto exclusive one that just came out for the game. It has Technician for the ability, which means it will be able to do more damage with critical hits. Actually, I think it powers up all attacks that are... Yeah, it does power up all attacks below level 60 by 30%. So, it's Quick Attack and Triple Kicks will do a lot of damage. Speaking of which, it's attacks are Quick Attack, Triple Kick, Counter, and Dig. Fortunately for me, I resist all of those except for Quick Attack. Unfortunately for me, Hitmontop is very defensive, so there's a very good chance that Taboos will not take it out in one shot. Okay, good job, Taboos. Alright, next up is Onyx. That is his one non-fighting type. Rock ground type, sturdy for the ability, as usual. It can't be killed in one shot. Sandstorm, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Dragon Breath. One Pedal Dance is all I'll need. That's all Soups needs to do to be a good boy and take out this Onyx in one shot. And there we go. Taboos and Soups both gain a decent amount of experience. Hitmon Lee is up next. Whereas Hitmon Top was the Hitmon Pokemon of Equilibrium with equal attack and special sorry, equal attack and physical defense. Hitmon Lee is more based off of just a brutish physical attacker. It has Reckless for the ability, Blaze Kick, Focus Energy, Swagger, and High Jump Kick. Some of its moves are not very accurate, with the exception of Focus Energy. All the rest of his attacks do not have 100% accuracy, so you might want to use that to your advantage. Which is what I plan on doing. And I missed, of course. I really hate that my allergies don't affect me until I'm doing this friggin' until I'm friggin' recording. It's unbelievable. Alright, so I'm gonna use a Persian Berry to heal taboos of his lowered friggin' sorry, of his confusion. 
And this should essentially do it, because that one swagger gives Taboos enough attack power to, I'm pretty sure, take out the rest of his team. And Hitmonlee's not the best defensive, so... There you go. Good job, Taboos. Next up is Hitmonchan, the more defensive-minded of these Hitmon Pokemon. Even though it's got some very interesting moves, it is the only Pokemon on his team that is of the fighting type that does not have fighting type moves. Iron Fist for the ability, so it powers up its any attack with the word punch in it. And obviously he has many of them in his moveset with Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Bullet Punch. Two of those moves can do severe damage to Taboos. Thunder Punch and Ice Punch being those ones. But I don't think it's going to survive with one swaggered up Taboos. And no, it did not. Taboos is ruthlessly strong. And is close to level 46, so nice. Last up is his master Pokemon, Machamp. No guard for the ability, so his attacks hit regardless of... Well, basically hit regardless of protect or whatever have you. Citrus Berry it's holding with the moves Rock Slide, Cross Chop, Revenge, and Foresight. Rock Slide will devastate Taboos, so I want to take this thing out as quick as possible. I don't know why it used Revenge there, but that's okay. We Quad Resist Fighting type. And... Presto! The only Pokemon that really gave us a slight challenge was, uh... That Hitmonlee when it got a Swagger off, but... Man, we just dominated. Having lost, I have no right to say anything. Go face your next challenge. Alright. This is the member of the Elite Four that has given me a lot of trouble in the past. Now, let me take a look. Taboos is, oddly enough, my best weapon for this fight. But I am going to take the amulet coin from Soups and I'm going to give it to Nutmeg. Because this one is kind of challenging. Especially for the type that that is. And to be honest, I don't have... I basically have one move that can deal with this type on my roster. And that is Taboos. But you will figure out what that move is in a moment. I think I'm going to go with my hot hand in Taboos and take on this fight with confidence. It's eerily dark in here, so let's talk to this lady. I am Karen of the Elite Four. You're Mikey? How amusing. I love Dark-type Pokemon. I'm known for my overpowering tactics. Think you can take them? Just try to entertain me. Let's go. Now, like Dragon, like Ghost, and like so many other types that were first introduced into this game, there are not that many dark types, so as a result, there will only be three dark actual dark types in the, on Karen's team. She starts off with Umbreon, synchronized for the ability, so do not put any status ailments on it unless you are incapable of being damaged by them. With the moves Double Team, Confuse Ray, Payback, and Feint Attack. It's PA de Resistance is Confuse Ray and Double Team to be an annoying pain in my ass. I'm going to be using my Persian Berries, though, because I do not want to deal with confusion right now. So, let's see what she goes with. She goes with Payback. Unfortunately, I didn't attack it this turn, so it's not going to do that much. I'm going to do Cross Poison again to try to soften it up, and then I'll do U-Turn to finish the job. You know, assuming you turn actually hits. Because you guys know with Double Team, it's a real pain in the ass move. And it did! Okay, nice. And... Oh, it lived! Damn! Oh, I was not expecting that. Um... 
Mama's boy. It only has physical attacks, so... It should not do that much to us. And this is basically going to reset everything that I just tried to do, so... So I'm going to use a Persian Berry here to heal. And she's probably going to use a full restore. Alright, so Mama's Boy is my next best bet to take out this Umbreon. Which has given me a lot of trouble in the past, so... Let's see how much it... Oh, come on! This bitch and her bitch Confuse Ray strategy. Ugh. Of course it hurt itself in its confusion. And now Mama's Boy is going to go down. And Double Team is going to make sure no moves hit. Oh my god! With this friggin' hurting yourself! Stop with the bullshit! Three times in a row! Come on! Four! Four! Four times in a row? Really? Ugh. Pain in my ass. Alright. Come on. I need you to come through here. That devastatingly strong attack. Ugh. Good riddance. Stupid Umbreon. Alright, Vile Plume is up next. It is one of the few that isn't a dark type. And it doesn't even have any dark type moves, which is weird. But I digress. Chlorophyll for the ability so it doubles its speed in sunlight. The move Sun sorry, Sun Spore. Stun Spore, Petal Dance, Acid, and Moonlight. I don't really see it being much of a threat to Nutmeg, so. I think this flamethrower should do it. Yep. Goodbye, good luck, and good riddance. Next up is Gengar. Ghost Poison type. Levitate for the ability so ground type moves will not work on it. With the moves Focus Blast, Destiny Bond, Spite, and Lick. My best bet is to use Alessi to take this thing out. Because, well, it's amazing against its own type. And Ghost is super effective against Ghost. Lick did not do that much damage. Shadow Ball should finish the job. I'm surprised this Gengar does not know Shadow Ball. That is a very odd choice. Alright, so it should heal itself. So let's use a Psy Beam. Oh, it's not healing itself? That's weird. I was not expecting that. I'll admit that. I guess she's saving her last moves, last ones for her ultimate Pokemon. Murkrow is up next. Dark Flying type. My best bet for taking you out is Nutmeg. Super Luck for the ability, which increases its critical hit ratio. I believe, I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken. Sucker Punch, Faint Attack, Pluck, and Whirlwind. One of its most annoying strategies is using Whirlwind to switch out your Pokemon and prevent it from basically getting all the experience. In fact, I think that's what it's planning on doing. So if I can get a Thunder Fang out in one shot... Yes! Okay, good. <sighs> Alright. Last up is Houndoom. Dark fire type. Flash fire for the ability, so don't use fire type moves on it. It'll be holding a citrus berry with the moves Nasty Plot, Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, and Crunch. Now, like my Houndoom in Pokemon Platinum, she will be using a strategy that is a very mean one. Nasty Plot to 
drastically raise her special attacking capabilities, and then Dark Pulse and Flamethrower. Honestly, since she's probably going to be, yep, since she's going to be using Nasty Plot, I made the right move to beef up my speed and attacking, attacking, attacking capabilities with Dragon Dance. Alright, and Waterfall. Houndoom does not have that good defense, so hopefully we can avoid taking a critical hit here. And perfect! Nice job, Derps. Derpori gets a lot of experience, and we beat Karen. Well, aren't you good? I like that in a trainer. We get a lot of money, which is always good. Strong Pokemon. Weak Pokemon. That is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with the Pokemon they love best. I like your style. You understand what's important. Go on. The champion is waiting. Alright. And we will take on the champion next episode. So thank you guys for joining me. I'm the Man 64 Join me next time when we go take on the champion. So until then, sayonara.